MSI South Africa sent over their Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium motherboard along with the brand new Intel Core i7 7700K CPU for me to check out. Seeing as I've been rocking its predecessor, the 6700K, for a good 15 months now, I was pretty keen on finally getting to see what Intel is bringing to the table with their Kaby Lake, Kaby Lake CPUs, however you want to pronounce it. For initial appearances, the 7700K is really similar to its forebearer. I mean, look at them. They have the same metal heat spreader. Talk about uncanny, right? In fact, the font on the CPUs are the same. I was hoping that Kaby Lake would be a bit more exploratory with their typography setup, but Oh well. All jokes aside, both 700K chips look the same externally because they also use the same LGA 1151 socket to sit on the motherboard, which means your old CPU cooler will still fit. And likely, if you have a Z170 motherboard, you would only need a BIOS update before you can start utilizing this new CPU. However, the question of whether or not you should upgrade to the new CPU will be answered shortly. Also akin with the two procs is the cache mount with 8MB, they have the same 4-core 8-thread setup, and both have core clocks that are at 4GHz or above. The 7700K does have the better frequency setup with a 4.2 GHz base clock with a 4.5 GHz turbo boost clock, meaning that the 7700K's base clock is the same as the 6 series turbo clock. The TDP on the 7700K is slightly lower, coming in at 91 watts, as opposed to the 6700K's 95 watts. Some big savings for your cooling costs right there. Honestly, there's nothing groundbreaking to be seen with this generational update as far as reading into the raw specs is concerned. A key thing to note about KB Lake CPUs, however, is that Intel is locking them down so that they will only run on Windows 10, which is also the same route that AMD is going to be taking with the Ryzen CPUs. So yeah, forced obsolescence into an ecosystem that spies on you, but at least we get DirectX 12, right? Regardless, there are some key improvements about the new i7, despite all of its doppelgangerness to the previous i7 that I'll get to later, but let's head into the benchmarks at the present. For my testing, I decided against leaving both CPUs at stock speeds, mainly because they're unlocked CPUs, and that means they're not meant to be run at stock at least in my opinion. So, I locked both CPUs down to a specific frequency in order to test them out with gaming. Keep in mind that this video is exclusively focused on current gaming performance, and I'll be delving into other testing in future videos. So, be sure to leave a comment down below with what other tests you'd like for me to do with the 7700K. For this video though, two sets of tests were run with the chips. The first with them running at a fixed 4.2 GHz, and the second with them running at a fixed 4.6 GHz, both of which either CPU is perfectly capable of handling. My friends over at Wootware were gracious enough to loan me a Zotac GTX 1080 amp for my testing so that I can make sure I wasn't hitting GPU bottlenecks in my benchmarks. I chose the most CPU bound games in my testing suite and ran them at 1080p to make sure the GTX 1080 wasn't hindering anything. If you want to see the extent to which these games are affected by CPU performance, check out my previous series right there where I examine everything from a Pentium to an unlocked i5 to check out CPU limitations. Back to the main point though. The results in these games are really not exhilarating. Software limitations are huge when it comes to getting the benefit that you want out of the 7700K. In many instances, the new chip performs slightly worse than its predecessor, obviously within a margin of 1-2 to two FPS. However, it goes to show that even though we've been on 4 cores and 8 threads since the i7-920, the ability of the gaming ecosystem to utilize all 8 threads isn't a strong point. Even with generational improvements on the 14 nanometer architecture, it's hard to discern a real, practical, tangible difference in the gaming performance of the new CPU. DirectX 12 still hasn't been the powerhouse that it promises to be, with CPU performance still going underutilized, and DX12 inclusion being more of a crapshoot per game than an API that I want to consistently run. However, with that said, if you are the type of person who leaves an unlock processor at stock settings, the extra boost to 4.5 GHz could help you out a bit over the 6700K's 4.2 boost.
Taking a look at synthetic benchmarks such as Geekbench, Cinebench, and W Prime, there's definitely increase on the part of the Cabby Lake chip, but the practical effects would be more readily found in other applications besides gaming, which again I'll examine further in later videos. So straight clock for clock comparison show that if you have a 6700K and you want to run the same frequency, the 7700K is a CPU that you can skip altogether. Spending extra cash for limited performance increase might not be a wise choice. It might be better to invest in a custom water cooling setup and get a higher overclock out of your current chip. However, with the constant leaks of KB Lake taking place before the NDA lifted, there were rumors floating about that it was a better overclocker than Skylake. And I am here to say that those rumors are completely true. I'm not sure if it's the chip or MSI's X-Power motherboard, but holy smokes, hitting five gigahertz on a CPU has never been so freaking easy. I struggled to get my 6700K to run a 4.9 gigahertz OC, only for a few synthetic benchmarks even, never mind getting it stable for gaming. 4.8 was my highest stable overclock for Skylake, at least on the chip that I had. Obviously, there will be differences due to the silicon lottery. The 7700K, in a dramatically different fashion, is a beast. I simply typed in a 51 multiplier in my BIOS, not configuring any voltages, adjusting core counts, messing with load line calibration, etc., leaving everything else default, and I have a stable boot and a stable GTA 5 benchmark. 5.1 gigahertz, stable, without even trying, not adjusting anything. That's amazing. Obviously, you'll need a decent cooling setup to make that overclock happen, thanks Wooware, since it still requires a decent amount of voltage, 1.4 volts according to CPU-Z, which is slightly inaccurate. However, if you've got a beefy cooling setup, then you'll likely go far with this CPU, and I honestly cannot wait to spend some quality time trying to push this chip further, which leads me to the question, would you guys want me to do a video of that quality time overclocking with the 7700K, at least with my decidedly average overclock? clocking ability. Let me know down in the comments. Overall though, the 7700K being the third iteration of Intel's 14 nanometer CPUs isn't a worthy upgrade for gaming systems. There's hardly enough performance increase or power consumption drop or extra features like a substantial increase in PCI Express lanes to justify spending hundreds of dollars if you already have a Skylake setup. I know that the only thing that has me itching to replace my Skylake chip is the 7700K's overclocking performance, which may or may not be your cup of tea. Honestly, I'm much more keenly anticipating AMD to release Ryzen over putting another Intel chip in my rig. I'm hoping that AMD can shake up the consumer desktop market, which has been freaking stagnant with quad-core octathread CPUs for three quarters of a decade now. But even though the new Intel CPU doesn't exactly get my motor running, there are some things about the MSI Z270 X Power Gaming Titanium motherboard that I think I'll enjoy. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when my overview video on this motherboard drops. And with that, I want to give a big thanks to MSI South Africa for sending both the CPU and motherboard over for me to check out, as well as to Wootware for supplying the RAM, the power supply, the test bench, and the graphics card. I really couldn't have done this video without either of their support. And again, be sure to let me know what further videos you would like to see with the new i7 proc, and I'll do my best to make those happen. Be sure to drop a like on this video if you found it helpful, useful, or enjoyable at all. Dislike it if you hate my facial hair, because I do too, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.